Hey guys, Key here from Kegland, and talking to you about our new Grand Deluxe Threes. Now, they, these bad boys are for people who really want to fit a lot of kegs in their fridges at home, or for commercial bars or restaurants who want to have a uh, kegerator set up, keep those kegs nice and cold, and dispense plenty of different beers on tap. This bad boy here can fit up to 12 kegs. That's the corny kegs we're talking about, or if you put in the DIN-style 50-litre kegs, can fit up to three. And this other guy on my left hand side or your right hand side can fit up to 20 of the corny kegs or you can fit up to five of the DIN 50 litre kegs. Now some of the differences between this and this model and the old Grand Deluxe 2s are that this is a little bit deeper. So the distance from front to back is a little bit lot larger. So it's actually a standard uh, bench top depth. Like you might notice with the older Grand Deluxes, they're a little bit narrower like this. So if you had them next to a bench, sometimes they look a, look a little bit odd because they have a narrower profile. The other thing is you may have noticed that you can't fit as many kegs into the same space, taking up the same width inside your bar or house. That extra depth as well really helps with the airflow and air circulation. We'll go into that a little bit later on. The other thing that we've improved is the compressors in these bad boys. So these now all include the hydrocarbon refrigerant gas R290. So that means that uh, it's better for the environment and also more electrically efficient. Now with regards to the doors on the fridge, you'll notice that we all have standard glass doors now. So these are double glazed glass doors that we have on all the fridges. So previously on the old Grand Deluxe 2s, you would have had to purchase the glass doors separately and do that upgrade yourself. Being uh, toughened glass, you'll find them pretty strong so they can take a bit of knocking. Uh, the other thing you'll notice is we've changed the shape of the glass doors a little bit as well. So on the older model of glass door, you'll actually notice the widths on the doors here are a little bit different. So these are now wider doors, meaning they can more easily accommodate the large 50 litre kegs. One of the things you'll notice in particular is on the three door uh, kegerator here, with a, the three door kegerator, the left hand door previously was not large enough to fit one of the 50 litre Euro kegs. They're the kegs which are approximately 420 mil in diameter. They actually wouldn't even fit into this left hand door. So you had to put them in the middle or right hand door. And a lot of people weren't fully aware of that and that led to some complaints as well. Now with regards to the tops of the fridges, they have slightly different, different configurations, whether you want the two door or 12 keg, or you want the, the big bad boy, the three door or the 20 keg model. As you can see, the three door unit actually has two font holes. So that's here and here. These are already pre-drilled, so it's really, really easy to fit a lot of the fonts that we sell, such as the, uh, um, the modular font kits that we have. You could fit other flooded fonts if you really wanted to. These tubular fonts are the cheapest option and probably the easiest to fit, to be honest with you. Um, with regards to the fonts, they can also be chilled using the font fan, which is included in the fridge. So you can see here, we've got a tube which blows nice cold air from the fans which are located on the right hand side of the fridge here. So the cold air blows up here and as long as you stick this up inside the font, you'll get that nice cold air cooling down that beer line and making sure the taps are a little bit cold so you don't get so much froth on that first glass. Now underneath the drip tray, you'll see that there's a drainage hole right here. On the underside of the uh, drainage hole, you'll see there's a hose connected which is inside the fridge. And that's specifically inside the fridge so you can actually put this hose into a bucket and keep that whole bucket refrigerated and that'll keep fruit flies off any drips which are going into that bucket. The other way to plumb it up is actually just leave the hose uh, connected to the elbow which comes as standard when you get the fridge and then connect this elbow onto your local drain hole so that way you'll never have to empty any buckets or drip trays ever again. Now looking inside the fridge, one thing you'll notice is we've changed the fan arrangement and the way the air circulates throughout the fridge. The older Grand Deluxe 2s had a smaller distance between the front and back and it was harder to blow the air all the way to the other side of the fridge. Now these units allow better airflow. The other thing that we've done is put this shroud here which basically pushes the air to the end of the fridge. So previously on the Grand Deluxe 2 you would have noticed that kegs down that end sometimes have a problem that was several degrees up to three or four degrees warmer than the kegs with this end, this end next to the fan. Now that we've got the shroud and a different fan arrangement, this put, helps push the air right to the far end of the fridge, better, better cooling all the kegs to the same temperature. Now on the old Grand Deluxe 2s and the previous models, we used to use the Corel temperature controllers. Now they were okay, but we did experience a number of failures and that sort of made us you know, keen to change off and use the Dixel controllers, which were found to be a more reliable controller. With the Dixel controllers, they're also really easy to use. If you need to change the temperature, simply get the set button in the bottom left hand corner here, keep your finger on that for about two seconds. Once the Celsius uh, Fahrenheit uh, logo changes on the uh, top right hand corner, 
click the arrows down to the set point that you would like, and then hit the set button again to save. The other thing about the controller is you'll notice that the LED light switch is on the front of the uh, units as well. So on the older fridges, they used to be inside the fridge, so you had to open the fridge to turn the LED lights on and off, and that was a little bit annoying, but now you have it right next to the power switch, so it's really straightforward to turn that on.